What's up everybody? Welcome back to the studio. I'm Ill Gates and I'm here today to tell you about the successful porting of my trigger finger templates over to the Akai MPD series. A lot of my users are using the Akai. It's a little sturdier than the trigger finger and it's not discontinued most importantly. Uh, but they were having trouble figuring out how I did the momentary effects to uh, in a non trigger finger template. So it's, there's all these complicated reasons why that's a pain, uh, but rather than leave everybody hanging, I thought I would just suck it up, go buy myself an MPD, learn to program it, figure out a workaround for the momentary effects, and release a free update for everyone. It's available for free to all my template users in both PC and Mac format, and then also internal mixing and external mixing versions. I typically prefer the external mixer just because uh, you don't waste all your knobs on your controller doing stuff that you can do with a mixer faster and better with less latency and everything but you know it, it there's a lot of requests for the internal mixing version so uh, I'm, I'm I'm actually I'm pr pretty stoked about the internal mixing version it's um, I managed to do a few things with it that you, you could never actually do on a hardware mixer. But anyway, if you want to know more about the philosophy behind the original template, the track organization structure, etc., check out the original trigger finger template video. This video is more just about the MPD and about the update and just to show all the MPD users how to set it up and what all the knobs and pads and faders do. So yeah, let's uh, fire it up and have a look. Hello, welcome inside the MPD template. I'm going to show you the external mixing version of it because that's uh, that's the version I would use. Uh, but there is an internal mixing version where you have uh, you have these smart volume faders that I created, where it's like a, a volume but a high pass and low pass that cross at the same time, and that makes it so that um, uh, you can do like a whole DJ mix just with one fader because when you think about what a DJ does when they're mixing they introduce typically first the mid-range at a lower volume and then as the volume increases you open up the highs and lows so I made one fader that does all of that so you can actually achieve very smooth mixes just by you know grabbing one fader up and one fader down and just going like shoop, shoop, shoop. Um, and uh, there's uh, th that's the only function that's changed. Uh, if, but if you balance those and the filters, you can totally mix all inside the uh, all inside the MPD. Um, okay, so you'll notice all of my templates when you open them, they load with no clips in them. There's just this resampling clip that I'm using to sample the internal audio of Ableton. Uh, that's because I like to drag in parts from either the Ableton browser, these are prepared clip packs, uh, there's a thread on the Ableton board if you look up clip pack Ableton there's a thread that I made about this preparation and organization system but basically the great advantage is when you have several thousand tracks there's not really any kind of quick easy way to get at them all without using search tags so now they've all, all my clip packs have been prepped here when I need ghetto bass music for girls then there's everything that meets that criteria. So you can take a set in any direction at any time. I'm just gonna go search for myself here and grab, um, grab a tune that just has, starts with a pretty simple drum loop for mixing. So you drag the tune in onto the map here scenes, right? And then that means that your four cue points will be controlled by these four pads on the outsides. Uh, I mirrored everything for the left and right just because it's a little easier to deal with. Uh, so this will be cue point one, two, three, and four, and those would correspond to the cue points within the track that you've programmed. Um, so uh, this template is really a lot of fun. The, the gain structure and the EQs you would do with the mixer. Uh, because there's not really any point in using up all your knobs and faders doing volume and EQ and gain when you have perfectly good DJ mixer at any gig anyway. Uh, and, you know, a lot of people get really kind of convoluted with their programming, but I've found over the years that really ideally you want to have one bank on one controller and a DJ mixer so that you can do it intuitively on muscle memory or, or whatever, right? Um, so... The template here has a bunch of different really fun effects and y there's filters here like high pass and low pass and I'll just show you how they sound. And a 
if you cross them, you can actually mix fairly effectively with crossed to crossed filters. Like. So you can kind of simulate doing EQ and volume just with the filters, which is pretty cool. Uh, but there's high pass and low pass for the left, high pass and low pass for the right, uh, and then high pass and low pass for the master. And then your tempo is the bottom right knob here, and that's because you don't want to hit it by accident. Uh, and then this one's the delay feedback for the delay send. So I'll just show you how that works in a minute. Uh, now, in addition to the filters, each side has a multi effects rack where you can select one of five effects with either fader four for the left or fader five for the right, and then you can tweak all five of the effects with fader three. It's kind of like on a Pioneer DJM, how you select the effect with one knob and tweak it with the other. Um, so I'll show you what those effects are now. Uh, the first one is loop. The second one up is a dirty high pass. The third one up is a metal tube delay kind of melt effect. The fourth one up is a gator that does rhythmic LFO gating. And then the fifth one is a kind of pumping side chain effect created with the auto pan and that's uh, really really useful when you're mixing um, and it will, it will kind of remove the downbeats on the drums and give everything this like pumping compressed sounding effect um, so I'll just run through them now and show you what they're like And you can see that last one you'd probably would just use uh, for for mixing. But if you have a track that has a lot of chords and a breakdown, sometimes that effect can be cool to turn on. It can, it's kind of like an interesting breakdown effect. Um, so in addition to that effect, faders two and seven uh, do this really cool slowdown effect. And I'll show you what that sounds like. So that effect's really a lot of fun too. Um, now the middle rows of pads, these are punch in effects. And this, this was actually the reason why people were having so much trouble adapting my template for other controllers. Uh, but the first punch in effect here is a reverse. The second one is a delay send. And as I mentioned before, the feedback is controlled over here. The third one down is a transform. And you can use that, uh, you, like what, when you hit it, down it won't do anything but once you let it up it's silence and then you can like tap out a rhythm with your finger uh, and then the bottom one is a beat repeat and the grids are controlled here so let's check that out now and the delay feedback's there. So you notice when I hit the delay send and the transform at once, if you let go of both of them at once, it creates like a delay fade away and then you can get the you can get the sound back by lightly tapping the beat repeat. So I'll show you just the transform on its own now. So that's, that's really a versatile system with these punch-ins. You can really get your hands dirty. It's a very kind of tactile, hands-on feel. And you can come up with all these different combos of like beat repeats and reverses and delays and transforms and the slowdown effect. Uh, and then the last effect on this last fader here, I'll show you, it's kind of like a, a big slow reverse and it happens on both sides.
and that's going to sound quite different from the punch in reverse. Watch. So you can really uh, you can really do a lot with this template. Uh, it's very very versatile, very very hands on, and. Um, you know, if you want to do performance parts over track, sometimes I'll make my clip packs with some performance parts at the bottom that you drag over the other turntable. But, uh, but yeah, it's a really versatile effect. Uh, you can see preset number one on the MPD, real easy to set up. Just plug in your MPD and uh, go into the preferences, and you would want track and remote on for the MPD. And then you're good to go. Uh, all right, so thanks for watching. Have fun with the template, and I'll talk to you next time. Peace.